everyone. Welcome to After Class with Ballet for All, a podcast by two passionate adult ballerinas about all things adult ballet related and some random thoughts in between. We're so glad you're here. So grab your water bottle or a cup of coffee and join us for a quick chat after class. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the After Class podcast. We have Taveen Verano with us again this week. She is a registered dietitian, and we are going to jump right into continuing part two of our conversation. So thank you so much for being with us, Taveen. Of course. Thanks for having me. So last week, I know we talked a lot about fueling our bodies for classes, the amount of classes we're taking, we talked a lot about protein, which was awesome. And so I wanted to just continue the conversation this week talking a little bit about after class and what needs to happen. It's funny, the name of our podcast is After Class. <laughs> yeah, so we'll talk about specifically after class, what needs to happen in regards to fueling to make sure that we are setting ourselves up to have energy for the remainder of our day, energy for the next day's classes. So I know we touched a little bit on protein, but I would love to kind of recap what are the, the main needs for post-class recovery when it comes to fueling our bodies as adult dancers. So I think that post-class is very, very important. A lot of times if we don't fuel properly right after class, we will experience some fatigue, some you know, extra cravings or extra hunger, or just general, just like a blah feeling a few, hour, a few hours after. So that usually, I mean, research keeps going back and forth on this, but most people agree that that 15 to 60 minute mark after a class is really vital to replenish with protein and, and nutrition in general. So I always like to think protein with some carbs, after class and the fruits and vegetables are always good to have because they do have a lot of antioxidant properties and after an intense workout we do tend to have a little more stress it's good stress right in our bodies but a little more stress so those fruits and vegetables really help with that but ultimately you want to focus on protein after your class whether you're taking protein with you and you know drinking a shake right after class or waiting till you get home if it's a meal time i just like to just have your meal so let's say you have a class at four you get home by five thirty six. it's dinner just have a, a protein rich dinner um, if it's in the middle of the day, make sure you have some kind of mini meal or snack to carry you to the next meal. But protein, carbs, a little bit of fruits and vegetables will will really help replenish your muscles after a class. So what, because I've kind of read and heard different things, what happens biologically if we don't fuel our bodies after an intense workout? So your your muscles need some glycogen after a workout, especially something as intense as dancing multiple times a week, like we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. And so some people say that you have a few hours for your muscles to be the most receptive, but a lot of what's been what's been backed over the years is that that 15 to 30 minutes is when they're most receptive. Your muscles are most receptive to replenishing with the protein. Basically, when you work out, you you break down your muscles, right? If, Muscles break down and you want to rebuild those. So protein and carbs will help kind of rebuild those muscles. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say if you're past the 60 minutes, there's no point to having, you know, definitely as soon as you can have that intentional protein rich meal after your workout. But biologically, it's it's thought that within that 15 to 60 minute time frame, it's when you're most receptive to kind of using up that protein and using it to rebuild those muscles that you just worked out in the class. I think uh, something that really helps me feel motivated to make sure I'm feeling my body after class is kind of thinking about, because you said exercise is breaking down. And if you're not helping yourself repair, it's almost like you're what? not getting them. Yeah. What's the point? Like you're not getting the maximum results out of your workout because you're not actually helping your body strengthen itself back up to the degree that you're going to get the maximum results for the effort that you're putting in. And so I think thinking of it in terms of that of like, man, I just did, you know, an hour and a half ballet class where I really worked and like, I want to retain the full benefits of that workout and fueling my body well with protein, you know, in the, the time window is going to help me really retain the benefit. So I don't know if that's like a correct exactly. way of thinking about it. But. Yes, it's, it's perfect because, you know, I, in the past, I've done like a really intense lifting workout, let's say, and I was not eating intentionally and I wasn't able to lift well the next day or the day after because the point is building strength, right? And ball ballerinas are so strong. So the point is you want to build strength. You want you want to reap the benefits of those classes. And if you're not fueling your body, the next day you are going to feel more fatigued. The, and then the following class, you might not be able to show up well for that that class. And so like I was like, thinking, what's the point of of lifting so heavy or working out hard or doing an intense dance class? If you're not going to, like you said, reap the benefits by properly fueling your body, you can't just run yourself to the ground. 
and then yeah. wonder why you're not being able to improve in a certain area or with a certain like move, like you have to be able to move your body afterwards. So that's a great way to think about it. And I think like for me, one of the things that I had to to do is like I just keep protein bars in my ballet bag because yeah. my dance studio is about 30 minutes from my house. And it's like I'll take class, you know, sit around and talk to people for 15 minutes, then have a 30 minute drive home. Then, you know, it's easy to walk in the door and get distracted. And so I found that for me, if I just keep a protein bar in my bag and I start eating my protein bar as soon as I sit in my car and and start the drive home it's like at least I know that I'm getting some level of fuel in my body rather than just waiting until I actually walk through the front door or prepare something so I don't know if that's you know maybe helpful for anyone else who's listening who's like oh man it's hard to you know make sure I'm kind of hitting that window of refueling like just keep a bar in your bag and just start eating it when you start driving I mean honestly like it kind of almost will also not dampen your hunger because we don't want to dampen hunger. But a lot of times if you just wait, sometimes after an intense ballet class, you might not be hungry. And if you just wait and wait and wait, then two hours later, you're like, okay, now I'm starving, you know? And so just to have that like preemptively fueling yourself with that protein will kind of help your your blood sugar and, you know, your your hunger later come in a, in a calmer way instead of just this like, oh, wait, waited too long. And now I don't feel like cooking dinner. Now I don't feel like yeah. doing anything I need to do. So that is a great way to just make sure that you're getting I mean I I had people in my old ballet studio who would keep like tins of tuna and <laughs> maybe I think the protein bar is probably going to be nicer to the people around you like <laughs> some kind of quick protein source just to have it ready to go while you're talking with people while you're saying bye that's a great way to do it yeah I think for me and my journey with all this has been really figuring out the little things that I can do that will set myself up for success that I will actually follow through on you know I think it's it's a harder goal for me to say okay, I'm going to set a goal to every time I finish ballet class, I'm going to go straight home and I'm going to go straight into prepping a really nutritious meal. That is like my fantasy self. <laughs> yeah. So we'll do that. And do what you can sustain. If a protein yes. part sustainable, do that. You know, it, you have to look at the context of your life and the weight and then that's going to actually be something, okay, I can do that every day versus I can do that once and then I'm over it, you know. I think something is better than nothing. And again, like I know I talked about this in the last episode, but something I really appreciate just about your overall approach is that it's not this like all or nothing. Like either you're doing the full out, like you're only going home and prepping this giant meal or what's the point? It's like, no, like eat the protein bar. Like if that works for you, do what is sustainable and works for you. And I think that that makes it so much easier to get wins on the board for people that are busy and trying to fit dance into like an already busy life and schedule like we need to be doing the things that we can actually follow through on doing which is like eating a protein bar as when you're finished you know because you might be running to the next thing and so it's better to eat the protein bar than like you said to not eat anything and then you're kind of losing all those gains I know you kind of touched on this earlier but what are some of the signs if you are like chronically under fueling? So what are things that like people listening would help them identify like, oh, I feel that way. Maybe I need to think about how much I'm fueling. So I think just general fatigue, which I know is very hard to measure because I know so many of us, I feel like as a culture are tired, you know, but general fatigue or even like, like mentally feeling down, that can be a sign of under fueling your body when you're just mentally mm -hmm. feeling like brain fog and difficult to focus and you're just feeling down and like general malaise, you know, that's like the word, mm -hmm. Meh, you know, um, that's a big sign. If you are feeling like you're hitting a wall in the middle of your classes, when you're just like great at the beginning and then you hit a wall or you're relying heavily on like caffeine to get through the classes and then you're hitting a wall, um, that could be a sign that, you know, the caffeine's kind of giving, I'm a big, I love coffee. Um, but you know, it can kind of give you this fake energy. Whereas like the, the nutrition is going to give you that long sustaining, strength building energy. Um, some some more maybe extreme examples would be like sleeplessness, insomnia can be a sign of just like under fueling for for the for the activity level that you're at. Um yeah, those would be like the main th and then and then also like lack of quick muscle recovery, like maybe you're sore and then within a day it's gone. But if you're just like constantly sore and your body's not really getting that nutrition to refuel your muscles, that could be a big sign as well. Um, and then just overall, like under eating, you know, there's, there's extremes, but you know, if you're just, you know, your, your hormones are out of whack, your cycles are out of whack, hair loss, those can just be like, okay, maybe I'm like burning the candle at both ends, right? Like something needs to, 
I need to make sure that I'm nourishing my body for the activity level that I maybe you love, you love dance and you want to be able to dance intensely every single day. That does mean you need to be able to nourish your body every single day for that to happen. So those would be some signs to look for. That's helpful. And I think too, I you know you said this in the last episode and I think it's so true is that, you know, most most women especially are not getting enough protein. And so I think one of the things I realized when I started actually eating the recommended amount of protein per day is like, oh, I have to eat a lot more food. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> have you ever like no, I'm not I'm not a fan of like weighing and measuring, but doing it once will be, actually be very eye opening when they're like, Oh, that's four ounces. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not just like one little piece of chicken. Oh. Yeah, it's like it's a lot more food than you might think it is. And so I think especially in the dance space, it's probably more likely that you're eating too little That's- than too much, especially if you're taking several classes a week. I think the danger of under fueling is probably a little bit higher than exactly. over fueling. Exactly. And I will say like making sure you're getting that post-workout I'm so used to saying post-workout, you know, but posting <laughs> protein is is going to be vital too for just like overall, like you said, at least you're getting that protein bar in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even just that is like the the precursor to still the goal being going home and having a meal. Yeah. You know, it's like at least you're getting, you know, something in because again, like when once I realized how many grams of protein, you know, I should be eating versus what I was eating, I was like, oh, <laughs> wow, a substantial deficit. And yeah, you will notice the difference. It, it is very helpful to be a little aware, not obsessive, not neurotic, but just aware of mm-hmm. what you are doing and then maybe what you could do to start feeling yeah. better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of our um, listeners sent in a question um, that they were wondering how to adequately fuel while simultaneously trying to lose weight. And I know this is kind of a tough question because like everything else with nutrition, it is very individual to the person. But are there some like general tips or guidelines that you could throw out? Yes. So I would want to ask first, like, how often is this person dancing? Is it like that five to six level or the one to two week to, you know, days a week level? Protein is so important when it comes to weight loss as well. People who eat more protein tend to lose weight in a healthier way and keep it off without needing to do anything extreme. There's research that backs up. The more protein you eat, the better weight management you have overall. And so having Protein at every meal would be my number one thing. I would also recommend her really um, embracing that addition nutrition mentality because when we want, when we have weight loss goals, we tend to make a like no list, right? Like, okay, I'm going to stop the soda. I'm going to stop the lemonade. I'm going to stop the sweets. I'm going to stop, you know, eating out. We say a lot of what I'm going to stop. And then we're kind of left with like, okay, like I'm just getting boring food every day, right? Versus, okay, these are the foods that I like to eat. How can I fit them into a context of a balanced plate? And balancing your plate, this is what, and I come as someone who has lost a substantial amount of weight over the years. Like I, I was overweight and then have reached a healthy weight without dieting, without counting calories, without feeling restricted, was able to kind of keep it off and in a peaceful way. I think that's one thing to ask Yes, maybe you want to lose weight, but at what expense? Like never try, never try to eat super clean to the point where your mental health is in the gutter. And that's where I like the addition nutrition approach where you can still have pizza, just make a side salad. You can still have the burger, just have like some extra greens on it or have some like carrots with some ranch on the side or adding vegetables, adding fruits, adding protein is going to be really, really important to have that abundance mentality when you're trying to lose weight. Because a lot of weight loss can be very that deprivation mindset, which is going to lead to, I think we talked about this last week, but that up and down, up and down, I lose 10 pounds, I gain 12. I lose 10 pounds, I gain 15. You know, the point is wanting to lose weight to keep it off, right? And so again, another thing when it comes to weight loss is not having a timetable or a schedule or like I need to lose X amount of weight in X amount of time. I get asked this all the time, but my clients will be like, how much can I expect to lose? Weight loss is very fickle. It's like you can do all the inputs, but you can't really control what the scale says based on your cycle. Are you bloating? Where are your hormones? Like, have you gone to the restroom? Like so many things impact the scale. And so focusing on your habits and your inputs and letting the scale be a side effect, letting weight loss be a side effect of the healthy habits. I think is is freeing. And I always say the slower you lose weight, the more likely it'll stay off. So again, Mm -hmm. not being so eager to lose weight. And I know this question was like, how can I fuel while losing weight? Weight loss is not a bad thing, right? I help clients lose weight all the time, but it's where are we putting it on the the goal list, right? Having multiple reasons why you want to fuel your body, why you want to eat healthy. 
and just avoiding that. I need to lose 10 pounds by the end of this month because that's not sustainable. We've all, I, I, I always say we could do that. We could just drink juice all day and you could lose. But where will you be at at the end of that month? How will you feel? Um, I know we talked about this last week, but how how are you feeling? Not just what what's the numbers say and what what do you look like, but how do you feel? Do you feel miserable? But you reached your goal, you know. Um, ultimately, you're you're not going to want to be miserable forever. Us humans like to feel good, you know, which is why a lot of times we lose the weight, and then we'll, we'll eat everything that we quote we weren't allowed to eat. So I always like, and another thing, this is my last point about weight loss because I, I could talk about this forever, but I like to be as inclusive as possible when someone's trying to lose weight. I like to keep in as much food that they like at possible. So let's say Friday night, they order pizza as a family. I'm not going to tell her you eat a salad while your family eats pizza. We, we're going to include the pizza and addition, we're going to include the salad. You can have the the cookie and the salad. You can have the the milkshake and like a veggie tray, you know, like it, there there's room for the both and. I think we need to live in the middle. Weight loss is possible, but it's the extremes that don't get us where we want to go. So really trying to be living in the middle, living in that freedom to say yes, freedom to say no. What can I say yes to in my day? That's going to make me feel good. And letting the weight loss take care of itself because it does. When you start living a healthy lifestyle and embracing habits you can do every day, the weight loss will take care of itself. It's just not making it the the star of your show, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Because I think it's the deprivation style of dieting is not going to work with a dance lifestyle, you know? So I think, yeah, their question of fueling while simultaneously trying to lose weight, it's like you can't you can't give up the fueling component if you want to maintain the dancing lifestyle. So yeah, it's, it's find that balance. Yeah, that's where like that protein is going to be really important because fueling your muscles and giving yourself that replenishment you need to show up well for your dance because you don't want to end up being like that fatigued person we were talking about earlier, right? Just yeah. for the sake of weight loss, you don't want to sacrifice your dancing for that. Yeah, and I think, you know, not to open a whole other can of worms, but I think too, it's also interesting how one of the things that I learned probably later in life that I should is just that weight loss, especially when you're also exercising and stuff, like when you're gaining muscle mass, sometimes what's happening on the scale is not always like, oh, I'm, I'm not losing as much weight as I would have thought. And it's like, well, you might be going down in inches, say if you're you're trying to shrink your waistline. But because you're gaining muscle mass, which also has weight to it, the numbers on the scale might not look as impressive, so to speak, as you're hoping for. So I think a week's keeping that in mind. Exactly. And then, you know, you don't want to not work out to see that number go down because working out is very important. Another thing to remember is when you, after you do something really like strength heavy on your muscles to recover your muscles, retain water. So that can also add to the scale, you know, and then we can drive ourselves crazy over like a half pound or a pound or things like that, where ultimately shifting that mindset to fuel, how can I nourish my body for the way I want to feel and the lifestyle I want to live? The weight loss does typically from the, I've worked with many, many clients over the years, the weight loss takes care of itself. We just need to focus mm -hmm. on mindset piece and nourishing your body. Mm -hmm. Quality of food. I know we kind of touched on that last week too, of like a donut and a piece of whole grain bread are not the same Athlete. You know, you're not getting the same nutritional benefit. So it might not even be, especially for a dancer, the answer probably isn't eating less. If anything, it's just eating things that are more nutritious. With weight loss, I'm sure people see all over the internet, like calorie deficit, calorie deficit, calorie deficit. And while I get that scientifically, that doesn't take into account why people are in a calorie surplus to begin with. Certain foods drive you to eat more of that food. So that's why quality does matter. And when you are eating high quality foods, your calories, without counting them, are typically in the range that you need them to be when you are, your foundation is protein, healthy carbs, healthy fats, vegetables, all of those yummy good things. So good. Thank you so much, Tavine, for doing another episode with us. This was so great and so helpful. Um, where can our listeners connect with you? So I am most active on Instagram at tavinebrano.rd. And also on my podcast, Nourishing Nuggets. Um, so if you're a podcast listener, go check out mine too. And my Instagram has all the links to so many different ways to connect with me. So come say hi. If you found me on the podcast, I'd love to, to chat. And what services are you currently offering? Are you accepting clients right now? Or are you doing group sessions? So I am doing more one-on-one -on -one clients right now. We are, it's summer right now. We are going to become a homeschool family in the fall. And so right now, one-on-ones uh, -on and, you know, you can either book a one-time call with me or do 
you know, higher level three months of coaching. There's different packages for that. And then I do also have, I know a lot of ballet dancers are probably go-getters, self-starters. So I do have like a two-week kickstart, I like to call it, where you get a two-week meal plan, all with the all of the principles that we talked about the last two weeks on the podcast, building those meals. So 14-day meal guide, 14 journal prompts to help with that mindset component, and then 10 at-home strength training workouts that you can do. So that's, that's also linked you know, on my Instagram, but that's kind of for that like woman who's like, I just want the tools. I just want to get started. It's self-paced. So that's also an option as well. So those are my two current focus. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So thank you so much. That's so helpful. And yeah, definitely go follow Tavina on Instagram. She posts so much helpful content. I'm currently working through your, the journal prompts for the first six months of the year right now. So yeah, she's constantly posting just great, really thoughtful, mindful content on her social media. So definitely make sure you give her a follow. Thank you to me. Thank you for bringing your expertise. Thank you. And thank you everyone so much for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to After Class with Ballet for All. Join the community on YouTube and Instagram or come dance with us, our weekly Zoom classes for adult ballerinas like you. Links included in the episode description. Special thank you to our sponsors. See you next time after class. Podcast produced by Mission Bridge Media.